All right, fun sale going on right now for Play Instruments by Native Instruments, and they are three for $59 US, which is almost three for one. So in this video, I wanna show you my videos on Play Series instruments, because I've done a video on almost all of the Play Series instruments, and it might be kind of fun just to go look at the little beats that I made for these different instruments or with these different instruments and help you decide if you need to pick those up yourself, because if you don't, have a whole bunch of play series instruments. They're a great way to start inspiration going. I remember when they first came out, I was like, okay, so is this just like a new synthesizer? I didn't realize that it really, what it was, was kind of like an expansion of synthesizer patches. And so that's kind of how it began, you know, with instruments like hybrid keys and ethereal earth. And then they've also got drum play series instruments that have been added recently. So here's the page of the play series instruments. And as I said, most of them are synthesizers, but they've got a bunch of drum ones too. So I won't go into the details of these instruments. You'll want to definitely make sure you go watch some of my videos for that kind of stuff. If you really want to know about the drums ones, go check out my video on Butch Vig drums. That one, I really go into great detail on how to configure it, how to use it, how to use the different patterns. And then if you want to know more about the play series instruments with instruments, with synthesizer patches and stuff like that, which is kind of the rest of them, glaze, I do go over the macros and stuff like that. And if you go to deft lines, you're gonna find a lot about the sequencer as well as my video on lo-fi glow. That's kind of one of the first videos I did on play series instruments specifically. You'll see I am quite fond of the sequencer in the play series instruments. And I got to touch on one thing that has been occurring to me over and over again recently. And that's like seeing new software, pieces of new software come out and they have new ways of doing things. And they have all these new hieroglyphics that you have to learn to get your way around a program. And the thing I like about all of these instruments is that once you learn one of them, you've learned all of them. So you don't have to relearn where LFOs are or where the modulation sources are or where the effects are or whatever. You know, for the most part, what you're dealing with here is a rompler. It's just playing back samples. You have basically two sides to, to most of the instruments and then you're blending between those instruments. So I'm not sure if glaze is gonna be on there, but I'll just show you one little idea with this one because I really did like what happened with this piece. Here's my little idea for Glaze. So everything except for the drum kit in that one was Glaze instruments. Really great for those vocal heavy, vocal lick kind of patches. Still, to this day, if I need a patch that has voice in it, that's the first place I go. Okay, homage I didn't do a video on, but let's pull it up. Let's just see if we can get some really quick inspiration from it. Well, I like that patch already. Beautiful patch. That actually sounds a lot like my Boards of Canada kind of sound that I love so much. And don't forget that you can zoom in on these play instruments. So let's make that nice and big. I do wish the text could be a little crispier though. I mean. So as I said before, most of these patches are gonna be two layers. So you're gonna have an A patch and a B patch. And you can see this balance is shifting between the two. So that's our just record crackle. So if you load up a patch and you're like, I don't need that crackle, just turn it off. And then we've got effects and stuff like that. And then of course, in all of these instruments, we can go in and dive a little deeper by clicking on tabs like the sound menu. Go watch my lo-fi glow. I go over all of this stuff here, amplitude, uh, envelopes and things like that. We've got effects, a sequencer, which in my opinion is the best. And I don't say that lightly. I really think the sequencer is fantastic. And then the macros look complex, but they're actually not too bad to, uh, to set up. We'll just try one more patch and then we'll move on. Pluck. I do like me some plucks. Okay, that's gonna be that wobble that we hear in that homage macro, I bet. Let's turn that down. So 
So I do find sometimes they overcook things with the, uh, the special control, the special macro. So I, I do find myself often turning those down and going, okay, yeah, I like that better the way it is. Okay, so there's homage. Let's move on to the next one, rudiments. I've done a video on it and I just go over the basics of it, but really great hip hop drum kit. Okay, so you load up a kit with this one and you get these different patterns up top, all set to the tempo of your project. And in this case, they're gonna show you what the tempo was, where it started from. So I would be like one, two, three, four. So if you ever need to mess with that, you can go over to the patterns and globally we can turn all these patterns to be at two times speed. So if I'm at 150, yeah, that's obviously not what I want, but now I can go to like something like 80 beats per minute. And those patterns are working perfectly. So just keep that, keep that in the back of your mind. If it says 150, you don't have to be somewhere near 150 to work with it. Once you find a pattern that you like, all you have to do is drag and drop it into your project. And now you can go edit those drums and work with those drums. And the rudiments one is all, of, all about sort of natural sounding hip hop drum kits. So for all of them, you, you have your different sounds. For machine, all you gotta do is set it to keyboard mode on your patch and then now you're playing the samples through. So now you can just go play as if it was a machine expansion. So now let's go through these a little quicker and I'm gonna skip Bazazian tapes. I didn't do a video for that one, but let's go have a look at Sway. I did do a video for that one. Right, okay, that was fun. I would say Sway is one of the more experimental kind of hip hop patch uh, collections. Feel It, never did play with that one. Maybe we should just have a quick look at Feel It because I've never really touched it. Sequences, I do like the sequences. Okay, yeah, all right, I'm feeling that. The nice thing about these sequences and the thing I keep going off about is the fact that you can choose a root key. So let's set the root key to C minor. From a musical point of view, it kept this little sequence here in the key of C minor when I went to this A flat. So it's actually taking whatever little sequence you've made and making it fit within the key, which is not usually the way sequencers work. And then same thing goes for Utopia. This one, we got EDM stuff. I do have a video on that one. That was pretty fun, actually, I gotta say. Those uh, acid bass kind of synths sounds a little crystal method. We've got uh, those kind of chord swells, Jean-Michel Jarre. This is all stuff that I love. I don't listen to this kind of music very much myself, but I do have an appreciation for it and I do have fun making it. So if somebody ever needs that kind of stuff, at least I can kind of speak that language a little bit, right? I do have a lot of fun playing around with Utopia with those patches. So Kareem Riggins drums, I loved playing with this one. This one was very different, very different hip hop style drums. If you're looking for organic drums, played with that super laid back feel, that only a few drummers can get, that Questlove feel, that Dilla feel, that library there is gonna be perfect for you. Played by a real drummer who plays with 
tons of artists and has just nothing but style that you end up with on your own project, which is super cool. Duets, I remember looking at that going, ah, eh, whatever. And then I made a YouTube video and just all these ideas came. More vocal style since, let's have a listen to this one. fun listening to these because most of the time I make these ideas up and then they never see the light of day other than the people who watch these videos. But uh, yeah, a lot of vocal stuff on that one. You can hear how it's how I'm working with it in a musical context. The only problem is with these vocal ones, whenever you're dealing with the phrases, is that, of course, everybody has these phrases now, right? So that same old sampling sort of problem that you have. Uh, but a lot of these patches have phrases and then other just patches. So it's not just phrases that you're getting with things like duets and glaze. Just keep that in mind as well. All right, so let's move on. Ignition keys. I don't have a video on it, but it's awesome. It's got a ton of great keyboard sounds, pop sounds, because it's actually one of my most reached for play series instruments. So that's all I'm going to say about it. I think Bo Tyler has a video on ignition keys. Maybe I'll put that in the description. You guys can go check out his video. 40 zone, we got keys and drums. Let's have a listen to what I came up with in that one. Fun, okay, I don't remember that one at all, but some really neat plucky sounds in there. And he's got a set of synthesizer patches and he's got his own drum thing, two separate play instruments. I teach music production and I have students and they've been digging into that one, this 40s very own, really coming up with some cool stuff. So definitely worth looking into that one. If you're into the pop, the hip hop stuff, you can find some really interesting gems in there. Empire Breaks is one of my favorite hip hop drums ones. Remember just being very inspired by these ones. So many good drum beats in here. Uh, here's my final idea. Looks like I'm going over some horn stuff. And I know people ask me about that often. So if you want to watch anything about me programming or putting in some basic horns, go check out the Empire Breaks one. <laughs> Really nice dry sounding drums, really cool beats, get the inspiration going, and then you can change your beats up, adapt them to whatever you want for your, your piece of music. Deft Lines, another one that I've made a video for. Uh, so let's have a listen to the beat. So it's cool to, to see that I'm not just a one trick pony and I honestly don't know. I sometimes wonder if I'm making the same song every week, but, uh, but honestly, part of it is the instruments. The fact that I get different inspiration and go in directions that I never would have imagined that I would have gone in, like using drill expansions and coming up with something that's sort of my style, you know, drill is not something I sit at home listening to or driving in my minivan. But I can appreciate it and I can appreciate the artistry and I can appreciate the complexity of it. And then I get to use elements of that in my own music. So it's pretty cool. Burnt Hughes and Stacks. I remember really hoping that this one was gonna have tons of horn stuff, kind of retro horns and stuff like that in it. And it doesn't. Melted Vibes. 
This one was bizarre. I remember when it came out, it's kind of one of the more early ones where I was like, what are they doing here? What are they going for? And then, you know, started playing with it and I realized, okay, this is all just about coming up with some sounds that have, that make you go in a certain direction. And it just gives you a starting point for patches that are in the ballpark. And I think that's one of the hardest things as music creators is like you get some new instrument that doesn't have that kind of organization and you find yourself going, I just want like a hip hop sort of lead sound. And you're just going through synth patch after synth patch and not finding anything that works. So that's what I love about these genre oriented play series instruments. Fun. All right. That's uh, definitely worth checking out. And again, some of the craziness of Melted Vibes can be dialed back quite easily. Almost getting to the end of what I'm going to show here. Soul session. <laughs> All those sounds were by the Soul Sessions play instrument, except for the drums. So definitely not what I was expecting. I remember being like expecting to hear soul patches and stuff, and, and it wasn't. It was a lot more synthesizer-oriented stuff and really nice sounds, but not what I was expecting. So hybrid keys, that one's been around forever. And uh, you know, I think most people have it from some in some form or another, but it's been around for a long time and has a lot of good patches and definitely worth having if you don't have it yet. Cloud Supply, let's have a listen to my idea with this one. I got to connect with Snipe Young and just a super nice guy and really talented and has done a whole lot of stuff with Native Instruments for expansions and play instruments. <music> So really cool patches in that. Sorry about the click being on there. Anyone who gets triggered by another hip hop patches library to check out. The next one that I've got in here is pretty fun. I pulled out electric guitar and uh, rocked out to some butch big drums. Um, at one point, I was definitely uh, more into the rock stuff. So still have some of those skills in my fingers. Here we go. It's a play series instrument, but it's drums. So let's look at the song. Are you ready for this? I actually grew up on a lot of Butch Vig albums too, so it was kind of fun to be able to review drum sounds by one of my former idols. That song literally came out of Butch Vig drums. That's, that's it, and I haven't heard it since then. But really great drums, really great crunchy, garbagey kind of drum sounds. And if you know Butch Vig, you'll know what I mean by that reference. Last one is the Lo-Fi Glow one, and this one, Definitely make sure you go watch this one because I go over all the patches, but I also talk about the ins and outs of the whole thing. Get in nice and deep there. And with this one, I don't really have much music that I made with it, but it's just more of a technical one. So yeah, check that one out. Lo-fi glow, a lot of that kind of lo-fi goodness that I think people still dig. I still dig it. So definitely wanted to pick up if you're into that genre of music, this lo-fi chill sort of thing. And then one of one honorable mention I will say is this modular icons. I just noticed that it's actually normally $89 Canadian, whereas the other ones are $69. I don't know if it's in the sale or not, but modular icons surprises me often when I just need really neat synthesizer leads or sort of fun sounding synth patches. 
I'll go to modular icons. Definitely worth checking out. Anyways, I hope this was helpful. And if you made it this far watching through some of my old videos and listening to some of my old ideas, thank you so much for hanging out and uh, hit me up in the comments with your favorite play series instruments. And if you have any questions about them, you know, you're trying to decide between one or the other, get specific and let me know in the comments what you're into, what you're looking for, and I'll see if I can help you make that decision. I do have an affiliate link, and of course that helps me out. So thanks so much for helping me, and I'll see you in the next video.